Hello everyone! Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is me, Aini. So today we're going to talk about Indonesia English Translation course. And for the students who are now in the fifth semester, welcome to Indonesia English Translation. So first, I'm going to talk about the definition of the translation. So if you pay attention to my PowerPoint, we refer to the definition of translation. So according to the Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary in the fourth edition, translation means to translate, which means to transfer. It's to transfer from the source language into the target language. It can be from one language to another language. So it focuses on a rendering from one language or representational system into another. Because our class is in Indonesia English translation, so I can say that Indonesia is our source language atau bahasa sumber ya. Then English becomes a target language or TL. So you need to get used to it into the popular term SL source language is bahasa asal which is Indonesia and TL is target language which is bahasa sasaran or English. So if last semester you have English Indonesia translation English become the source language and Indonesia becomes the target language and now we have the vice versa Indonesia English translation Indonesia becomes the source language and English becomes the target language that's the definition we go on the second slide so I'm also going to talk about the challenges of translation uh, so translation is the combination between the two parts the first one is grammar or structure or linguistics and the second one is vocabulary building so translation I mean if we talk about translation we talk about grammar structure and also vocabulary building if you refer to the PowerPoint that I have already shared to you, uh, there is an example of the language structure in terms of the grammar. And one of the examples is that this sentence, if you pay attention, the language consists or consisted or be consisting or will consist of some words and expressions. And the answer is simple present because that's a something in general. So the, the answer is the language consists there is an S after consists after the main verb because the subject is it. The language, if you change into the subject pronoun, it becomes it. So it consists of some words and expressions. The language consists of some words and expressions. That's the second one. The challenge of translation is that sometimes people are hard to translate from source language into the target language. If that deals with the idioms and expressions because idiom is totally different I mean the meaning of the idiom is totally different from the real meaning of those words for example if you find the word it is raining cats and dogs you cannot translate it to hujan kucing dan anjing no that's not the meaning that's not the real meaning it is raining cats and dogs in one of the English idioms and the meaning is that there, it's raining very very hard or hujan deras. So when you find the word it is raining in dog, it is raining cats and dogs, you cannot translate oh ada hujan kucing sama anjing, no. But the translation will say hujannya uh, sangat lebat. Sometimes people get confused on how to translate from English into Indonesia or vice versa or probably some other languages because they don't know the meaning of the idiom because again that the idiom is really different from the real meaning you need to understand the idiom meaning from a different idiom dictionary for example or some of the tools that you can learn for example another example Please pay attention to the PowerPoint. The subject of the research needs to be stated neck and neck. 
neck and neck hair doesn't mean leher dan leher you cannot you cannot translate uh, subjek penelitian harus diawali atau harus dinyatakan secara leher dan leher no but the neck and neck hair means necks or side by side So the subject of the research needs to be stated side by side, which means subjek penelitian ini harus dinyatakan secara bergantian or berdampingan or bersampingan. That's the, the result of the translation. Third, sometimes people are confusing. It's not confusing. Sometimes people are confused to translate if it is with the compound words. Compound means combination between the two or more words yeah for example bookworm it's not that cacing buku but bookworm means kutu buku means that as someone who is a very intelligent who likes to read a lot uh, another example is deadline and some other you can find another example as well we go on the next slide uh, It's about the other challenges of translation. So again, that I mentioned that if you talk about translation theory, translation will focus on grammar itself and also vocabulary building. And that's in the grammar. People people find some challenges because for non-native English speakers like us who live in a country whose uh, which English is not our first language, English is still our foreign language. We find that. Translating into English is, I mean, translating into English might be hard. So other challenges if it deals with the verb preposition, because in English preposition is very different from in from Bahasa Indonesia. Like, if you find Bahasa Indonesia as a source language, dekat uh, dengan, if you translate into English, it becomes dekat is close, dengan is with, close with. But that translation is totally wrong because in English the preposition is not with. Kalau di bahasa Inggris close itu gandengannya dengan to. Jadi close itu gandengannya dengan to. You are close to me, or my house is close to yours, or other than it can be different from. Yeah. Uh, kalau ada anda menerjemah kata different from, you might use bahasa Indonesia. Probably people will think like different is berbeda from is dari. So the translation into the bahasa Indonesia is berbeda dari. That's totally wrong. Karena different from itu diterjemahkan ke bahasa Indonesia menjadi berbeda dengan. In bahasa Indonesia. Berbeda dari itu tidak ada. Adanya adalah berbeda dengan. And the vice versa or sebaliknya. If you translate berbeda dengan into English, some people mention or translate menjadi different with. Karena dengan in English is with. But that's totally wrong. Karena di bahasa Inggris tidak ada different with. Yang adalah different from. And this is the example of the verb preposition. So, If you translate a word or a sentences yang itu mengandung preposisi, you need to shift, you need to adjust with the target language. Diperhatikan target language-nya. You need to go back to or you need to revert or go back to the rule of English. Kalau look itu bisa bergandengan dengan up, look after, look in, look at. Those prepositions have different meanings. Jadi beda look up, look in, look at itu beda semua maknanya. And also another one is it can be break, break down, break in. Itu juga berbeda like shut down and then shut up itu berbeda. So when you find the word or when you find preposition in the terms of translation, please refer to the target language. You need to understand the grammar. You need to understand the rule. Dan tidak bisa diterjemahkan apa adanya karena anda harus belajar grammar. Again, I say the translation contains of structure, grammar, and also vocabulary building. And you can need you you need to learn both of them. You cannot neglect either one, but you need to focus on both of them. Jadi tidak bisa hanya menerjemah apa namanya itu kosakatanya aja, tapi harus juga menerjemah grammarnya. Maksud saya harus memahami teori grammarnya. Next, 
multiple meaning multiple meaning multiple means more than one yeah so meaning homonyms homophone and homograph if you learn bahasa indonesia homonyms homophone homograph homo means same yeah yang sama apanya tergantung kalau itu phone means dua kata yang suaranya sama but the meaning is different kalau itu homograph graph mean the words or the letter means dua kata yang tulisannya sama but the sound is different we go on the next one i hope that you can pay attention on the example and you can read by yourself we go on the next one is sarcasm now sarcasm is a kind of different word or different area of translation sarcasm it can be about politics or yeah it's usually about politics like if you see the example there is the word sharp bitter cutting style or translation that usually means the opposite jadi sarcasm itu kalau di dalam teori terjemahan tidak bisa diterjemah apa adanya karena sarcasm adalah cutting style itu hanya style berbicara yang aslinya artinya adalah yang sebaliknya ya sharp bitter bitter itu agak agak pedes gitu jadi kata-kata yang sarcasm ya paham kan ya di bahasa Indonesia or cutting style of translation that usually means the opposite jadi maknanya itu kebalikannya I will give you an example oh I think this research does describe the characteristic of the order kayaknya penelitian ini sangat mendeskripsikan karakteristik dari penulis tapi enggak Kenapa tapi enggak? It's because of the sarcasm. So when you say this research does describe the characteristic of the order, means the vice versa. That this research does not describe the characteristic of the order at all. Jadi sama sekali tidak mendeskripsikan karakter dari penulisnya. So that's the sarcasm. So if you find the translation theory, kalau misalkan Anda menerjemah gitu misalkan, Anda menemukan sarcasm dan Anda tahu dari mana karya itu sarcasm, nanti kita akan belajar di the next slide bahwa ada di dalam kalimat itu yang disebut dengan konteks atau konteks dan Anda harus memahami itu. Whether this is the true answer, sorry, whether this is the real explanation or real expression or this one is sarcasm. Is that sarcasm? Is that the true? Jadi kalau misalkan ada orang yang bilang uh, you're smart is does does this term means that you are really smart or probably the vice versa that you are not smart at all if it is sarcasm that's it like like the last example is i am insulting you we go on the next slide, it's about translation process, it's because our class is Indonesia English Translation, so my focus this semester is on translation process of text or written text. So, in the PowerPoint, please pay attention in the middle or in the center of the box that I have already drawn, there is translation. It, yeah, it consists of two texts, written texts, I mean, and language use, grammar, context, and language function or context. So when you translate from source language into the target language, you cannot just directly into the translation process without referring to the language use or grammar. Seperti yang sudah saya contohkan tadi, misalkan kalau ada preposisi maka terjemahannya akan berubah, tidak different with, berbeda dengan walaupun bahasa Indonesia tapi menjadi different from. Also you need to analyze the context, jadi konteksnya itu nanti akan seperti apa gitu loh, what kind of context that the author means. If you are a translator and you don't know the context, please I encourage you to ask. The person or the order directly what kind what kind of context he or she means because we are as translators we cannot understand the context totally or overall it's because we are not the order the order are people other people so if you don't know the context of the certain text for example if the text is about medicine or 
English for banking or English for management and then you don't have the idea of how, how, how is I mean you don't have the idea of of the context from the content yeah context from the content so please ask the order oke okay. langsung tanya aja ke penulisnya ini maksudnya bagaimana gitu so context will avoid misunderstanding so if you don't want to miss the word if you if you don't want to have an misunderstanding between the sentences you please ask the order directly because misunderstanding will influence the result of the translation so if you're not sure about the context or the language function please ask the order and we go on the next slide huh. It is about the text. So our focus this semester will translate the text. Yeah, not oral translation because I think oral translation is more likely to be an interpreter and that's a very different area. It's harder. So I will focus this semester, I will focus the theory of this semester into translating the text, which is written text. Uh, so what kind of text that the students will translate first is academic reading text yeah so the text which is in a formal reading passage and then the second is abstract from the journal yeah because abstract is a very popular among all people in this world so if you later on in the future you become a translator I bet that there will be a lot of people uh, over or need a translators for their abstract because everyone is now writing everyone is now being an order so there are and they don't always understand English or yeah they don't always understand English so they ask translators to translate their abstract that's why we will focus or I mean the students will focus on studying on how to translate abstract this semester and the third is scientific text scientific text is the written text dealing with a science yeah uh, what's the difference between academic reading text and scientific text the difference is in the field or in the content of the text if it is scientific text the content will probably not probably will focus on the science is about the science ilmu pengetahuan but the for academic reading text the text can be varied depending on the topic of the reading but academics mean formal so the text is in a formal and the last is literature ha huh, this this is hard for me i'm not sure if it is hard for you because different person might have different perception or different field of the study like me myself uh personally or generally speaking that i am not a type of person who likes literature which means that i never studied literature when i was at school and it's different from pavivi or my Nuru, for example but literature is more likely poetry or novel or short story or comics or whatever it is I'm not sure if we have time to translate literature because usually literature product can be very long and thick book uh, but let's see how it works so it depends on how much time we have this semester but the important one is that the students are expected to practice translating abstract journal and academic reading text as well as scientific text if we still have time we will try to learn translating literature but then if you don't that's okay you can learn by yourself <laughs> what so that's the end of the session today i will give a summarize of my explanation that first we are learning on how to give a definition of translation uh, indonesia and english translation i mean we also talk about the challenges of translation yeah it deals with the language structure idm and also compound word and some other linguistics things and also we talk about the preposition verb 
sarcasm and so on and also we all talk about the translation process like how we as a translator process the word into the from the source language into the target language in terms of the text or written text which which consists of language use grammar and language function I also explain about the kind of the text that you are going to translate this semester they are academic reading text subtract from the journal scientific text and literature literature is the exception if you have time you will translate literature but then if you don't that's okay and that's it about today I will give you a time or an opportunity to ask a question and that's gonna be sorry that is going to be a uh, open discussion for us from us and that's all I think so thank you for listening bye bye